morning and welcome to Green Tiger Sessions. And today um, uh, we are joined by uh, Hemp Engineering as well. And uh, we are so lucky to have, very fortunate to have, um, Honorable Sophia Mermont, the first woman ever elected um, as a cannabis um, representative in a um, parliamentary in a parliamentary system. So um, I'd like to do uh, I'd like to do an introduction first. Um, I'm Kimi Del Prado from Green Tiger Journal and Hemp Engineering, and I'm also helping Ramon out in um, in in organizing Hemp Expo. Um, so for our first for our distinguished guest for today, we are very fortunate to have Honorable Sophia Mormont. She is an Australian politician and a member of the Legalized Cannabis Party Australia. She was elected into office this year to the Western Australian Legislative Council for the party in the Southwest region. And prior to entering politics, she was practicing uh, a nat uh, nat naturopath and Chinese medicine practitioner based in Perth. She also worked as an educator in the corporate sector. She studied at Perth Academy of Natural Therapy, having initially trained as a registered nurse at the Anna Rainavon School of Nursing in Amsterdam. She moved to the Western Australia with her parents in 1983 and has an active interest in health, the environment, women's rights, and animal welfare. And uh, with us, joining us as well, we have um, uh, Ramon Granados. So Ramon holds a civil engineering and environmental degree from Florida Institute of Technology in the USA in 1985 and formal hands-on career development in project management over, with over 30 years of experience delivering um, EPCM, Engineering Procurement, Construction, Management, and Commissioning Projects, over 6 billion projects. So he has founded and co-founded Hemp Engineering, Biomass Engineering, and Green Tigers Journal. And uh, also he has been organizing a lot of hemp events such as Hemp Home Expo, Hemp Textile Expo, Hemp US uh, Home Expo, and we have upcoming Hemp Wellness Expo and other expos as well. Uh, so we, I now bring to the floor Mr. Ramon Granados, the floor is yours. And uh, good morning again, uh, Honorable Sophia Mormon and Ramon Granados. Thank you, Kimi, for your intense introduction. Oh, <laughs> you are really overwhelming. Sophia, this is a great pleasure having you in our show. Um, it's um, really hard for me to explain uh, the emotions that I have within my heart. Uh, primarily because um, your journey is very similar to a journey that we lead in Venezuela, where two political parties led, um, basically they became the owners of democracy for over 60 years. Nobody really thought that a small party would ever break through. And after that, a big revolution started. That, uh, that the results were wrongly, that's a different story. <laughs> but we were able to break through. And what you have done, it is a star, shining star for the hope of millions, bringing the voice to cannabis uh, interest and moreover, bring light to the darkness. I have been listening the speeches that Mr. Brian Walker has been, you know, asking our fellow representative in the parliament. And with all due respect, with the love that I have for this country, it was very embarrassing listening their answers. Right. Okay. So, Sophia, well, thank you for how do you having end up me on. In, the, in, the, in, in all <laughs> this. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, um, I, look, I know that I'm, I'm flattered by the lovely description uh, that both of you have given me, and I'm, I'm quite honoured to be here. Um, I think it's very exciting that cannabis and hemp are being so normalised that two people can get elected to a parliament on that platform. And I hope it signals a massive change in the attitude um, that people have towards cannabis uh, around the globe because it's an amazing herb. It's an amazing um, 
plants to work with in regards of, you know, batteries and construction and all of those things. Um, and it's, it needs to be normalized. It absolutely does. Uh, I'm also aware that the fact that I am in Parliament is uh, because of the activism of so many other people uh, out there, including people like yourself, uh, but also like people in Nimbin, uh, you know, people have been campaigning for over 40 years to get cannabis uh, legalized again, uh, you know, and um, Brian, Dr. Brian Walker and myself are the culmination uh, of that sort of activism. That's, you know, that's why we got voted in, not because of who we are, but because of people wanting to see change and because of the uh, the activism of so many before us. And that is the common bond in so many people that suddenly has awakened that the impossible become possible. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that, and that is what the heart of at least this humble person tried to express. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. The, 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 one of the things that calls more my attention is that um, you, all, you are in the um, uh, medicinal or, or health um, environment. Uh, you know the effects uh, that the um, uh, cannabis has over the mind and the body. Um, yeah. um, so uh, it is a completely different perspective of, of a common politician because you are coming from, you know, bringing I'm, I'm coming, I'm coming from a holistic medicine perspective. Um, you know, I, I trained initially as an RN in the Netherlands and, um, you know, in chemo patients, if they were the right sort of demographic, uh, the senior nurses would suggest that some of one of their friends go and buy them a joint at a coffee shop and come back. And, you know, there was literally no medication that we had that would have the same effect for those people. You know, they would come back on the ward, they'd be happy, they'd be hungry, their nausea would be gone, and their pain would be much reduced. So that was my first sort of experience with the medicinal use of cannabis there. Um, and then I, I went on to study naturopathy and then traditional Chinese medicine. Uh, you know, and as a herbalist, you can see the benefit of, of cannabis. The cannabis seeds, for instance, ground up, make an incredibly useful and very gentle laxative. And that was taken away from us as uh, Chinese medicine practitioners. Um, there's absolutely no high associated with that, except for, you know, having the satisfaction of having a good bowel motion. Um, and then, um, you know, and, and when you look at the medicinal benefits of cannabis, they're huge. When we look at pharmaceutical drugs, we often look at one active only in there. When you look at herbal medicine uh, and including cannabis, you find that there's a whole array of actives in there. It's not just CBD, it's not just THC. Yes, yes. It's all the terpenes on top of that as well. And when you take a whole herb, you get all the synergistic effects associated with that too. So, and one of the reasons why the pharmaceutical uh, industry um, finds it difficult to deal with herbal medicine is because you'd have to uh, patent all of the actives yes. and that is almost impossible to do and you can't simply patent a plant yes. so um, you know the, so the, that is part of the resistance uh, and then obviously it has a negative reputation where people that they, they uh, when you mention cannabis you know their their mind jumps straight into some sort of I don't know, a shooting gallery in a dungy place in New York or something like that with people dying over drug overdoses. And it's not like that. It's not like that at all. Agree, agree. And that brings us um, to this journey that you are now, you are in the, 
In Spanish, we say, I don't know if that is properly translated into English, but you are barking in the cave of the wolf. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's some truth to that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, um, but, but it's changing, you know, it is changing. Um, if you look at Parliament and you look at the, if you go to the web page of Parliament, you can look up the Hansard transcripts and that records everything that, um, that's being said in that chamber. And you can look up specific terms like cannabis and marijuana, and you can see how often that has been mentioned in the upper house. And, you know, it, just us being there um, has increased the amount of times that cannabis is being mentioned and hemp as well. And every time it gets mentioned, it normalizes it that little bit more. So when I first got elected in, you know, in, into the upper house and I would uh, introduce myself to people and say which party I was from and say from legalized cannabis party and people would giggle a little bit, like a little bit uncomfortable on that, you know, um, and that, that stopped. We've been in there for was it seven months and that has stopped. You know, people aren't giggling anymore. They're starting to take us serious and I think that is a very rapid change in a, in a very short time. So I'm, I'm excited about that. Uh, and it shows, you know, um, it shows that we have um, created a, a sense of credibility around cannabis and hemp on a, a on quite a large scale. Um, what I believe that um, time is relative in many aspects of the understanding of the solution, the solutions that we are currently looking for to solve so many issues on regards to homelessness, food, clothing, and else. With so yeah. much evidence, a scientific and, and all kind of um, support documentation that the politicians need. Six months perhaps might seem very uh, uh, um, successful in many ways, but the truth is that it seems very, very slow for the amount of knowledge that it is at the hand of everyone. Uh, yep. Laws that are, the law is wrong <laughs> to start with. <laughs> Yeah, and yeah. the aspects of the benefit that uh, hemp can bring to the economy right now, in, yeah. in, in, in especially just Western Australia, then uh, I I think it's much easier to put them out than educate them. Yeah. It's much yeah. easier to get the party to become strong, very strong, convert that into a political capital. And bonded out because they are no fit for they are no fit for what for the world that is coming. This is the yeah. technology. It is about using hemp as a as the epicenter of the new change for building homes yeah. for everything. And yeah. we're just we're not just focusing where we're supposed to go. Yeah. While yeah. we're in the old agonizing a uh, way of capitalism that is destroying the planet, we will not resolve this. More yeah. more conceptions to mining, more conceptions to oil, and while we are telling them, hey, you know, by the way, see it can fit to my, we can use that him and do a fit to remediation yeah. in all the damage that you have done, and still they're still thinking about it. No, it's easier to button out. Yeah. My thinking. Yeah. My thinking. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. Look, I, t I totally agree that you know, for for our survival and for our planet's survival, we need to adopt um, a whole range of new technologies. And I think the potential of hemp is huge there. Uh, building materials, batteries, plastic, um, clothing, uh, and 
you know, currently at the um, this is the World Summit, uh, uh, our Prime Minister is still talking about gas and oil. Oh, please. Um, and it's, it's, it's embarrassing. It really, really is. You know, we need to, we need to move on fr from that. And, and in regards to, uh, you know, when you're speaking about war, every time our society has gone from one form of uh, energy to another form of energy, there has been a war in that, that crossover. Yes, yes. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping we can avoid that this time and go straight to being able to uh, store uh, solar energy or wind energy, yes. you know, in, in batteries that makes it both transportable and not reliant on, on the sun shining a particular day, you know, the, uh, yeah, deep cycle batteries that provide really long uh, output. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, uh, Sophia, I, I heard you in one of your speeches, your vision about how we should um, uh, evolve in trading uh, marijuana in, in Perth, in Western Australia. You have the same vision as we were in Amsterdam. Um, tell us more about uh, that. How it was in Amsterdam? Sorry, how. How you things know, happen in Amsterdam? And, you know, yes. Right. Hi. Um, I'm not quite sure. See, in Amsterdam, it's uh, in the Netherlands, it's decriminalized and not legalized. And they only recently started experimenting um, with taking control of the growing as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, my, my vision here in Australia is that we control, uh, uh, the government controls or regulates, more likely regulates from the growing all the way to the consumer. Because what that would mean is that we can put in uh, safeguarding for miners and we can make sure that the product that comes out is, um, is a clean product. It's not mixed with anything else. It's, uh, one of the things we've had in Australia is where cannabis has been mixed with meth uh, and obviously meth, methamphetamine is more addictive uh, and that creates, well, methamphetamine is addictive, cannabis is not. So that creates a much more uh, loyal customer if you get someone addicted. So if we can get a product that is um, with different strains and people can decide exactly on what they want to buy, they understand. And you do see this in Amsterdam where you're going to the coffee shop and there's a, um, a menu where it says, you know, if, if you want to sleep, you take this one and it gives you CBD, THC um, ratio. If you want to have a good laugh, then you take this one, that sort of thing. So... Um, yeah, I had the pleasure of being in Amsterdam many times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Hey. And can I ask if you visited the coffee shops? Oh, of course, I did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I am, yeah. Uh, the Sophia, um, after I decided to quit my corporate career, I, yeah. I, I traveled to um, Denver, Colorado. I, I learned about hemp over there and I rejoined a uh, uh, a good friend of mine who is still my, my business partner. We went to the university together in the United States and we founded okay. him. Yes, and we're still together yep. in this ever since. Actually, he's got a master's degree from MIT as well. So it's very bright and also have the, well, also Carl Martel, who is one of the genius in this business, is also in our team. Uh, we're very blessed also with a very, very good and, uh, people around us. Uh, what I'm trying to say is that before that, and I, I, I open uh, express that I was a, a cannabis user, wide open. I stepped out of the closet, and of course that brought me a lot of trouble, <laughs> problem with all kind of everyone. <laughs> but I feel that I, I, 
I had the responsibility to be honest with myself and everyone uh, that, that yeah. I'm a marijuana user. I'm a Rastafarian. I don't have the dreadlocks for other reasons. I'm almost 60 years old. <laughs> <laughs> I use marijuana also for um, religious reasons, as my religion itself. But, um, yeah. uh, but yet uh, the fundamental problem here is that the law is grown and um, that is the basically everything that surround our main problems of having developed or be able to establish an idea of getting coffee shops or, 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 or the proper quality control that the government wants to decide to implement the business itself and, be, and, and let people grow as well. Because at the end of the day, this yeah. is free, this is for everybody. Look at yeah. Colombia, yeah. Colombia allows everybody eight plants, Mexico 20 plants per person, per person in a family. They, they understood that this business is so big, it doesn't matter how much you grow in your house, you will never be able to overcome the needs of the, of the world in regards of, to the medicine that we can come from. from of yeah. course, we need the corporates to, to, to grow and have a, a special role in this business. We want cannabis for everybody. But at the same time, they cannot be greedy enough with the same, same mentality that because you grow three ten, ten plants in your house, they're gonna they think they're not gonna be able to sell more. That is more greedy. Yeah. That's not the understanding of the world that, that we want to build. That's my thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, and I agree with you that there too. You know, and people do ask, um, you know, why we want full legalization. And the reason is that I do want people to be able to grow plants in their backyard for um, medicinal or recreational purposes. Yep. Um, you know, the, I was told that someone who has uh, cancer and wants to make Rick Simpson oil, for instance, that they would need eight plants per year in their garden. Um, I, I have no problem with that. Um, you know, it's, People, it's, it's, a, it's a herb, it's a medicine. Having said that, I do agree that we need to be aware of, you know, like I said, safeguarding of children in yes. that we need, the, the way we envision that is that we have similar regulation around cannabis as we do with um, alcohol and tobacco. Now, alcohol and tobacco are a lot more harmful, okay? But... Um, you know, they're in, in WA, they're not allowed to really be on TV. You need to show ID if you want to buy these products. And and I, I think that's, that's a good thing. I have no problem with that. Um, I, Sophia, but, with, with all due respect, no? I yeah. believe that that is um, uh, somehow uh, um, without, without the... Uh, uh, without the proper, uh, without falling in the purpose of our cause and mission, okay, we start dancing the same mentality of the provision, the, the people that support the provision. If they were so concerned about kids, they could be more concerned about sugar, which is actually the drug that is killing everybody. So that. Yeah, 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 that too, yeah. So that is a, a thinking that uh, we're going, no, I know it's not about you, it's I know that uh, we want to have the safety regulation to keep kids away that, yes, but that is much simpler and it should not be uh, obstacles to change the law. Because yeah. if they were really concerned, they could be doing the same thing for sugar and everybody happy. Yeah. And, and sugar is sold uh, everywhere. It is in the hamburgers. It's everywhere. <laughs> it's everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Like, and, and and children have many conditions that benefit from uh, cannabis in a uh, as a medicine. In, in, you know, ADHD and epilepsy are probably two more famous conditions that we are seeing with children. Um, but having worked as a herbalist would have also seen with children is an increase in anxiety and sleep problems. Uh, you know, and then these children at young ages are already being put on to antidepressants. Yes. And I, I think I, 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 can't, I can't get over that. 
children should be happy. They should not be depressed. There's, if there's the need for antidepressants at a young age, one, we need to analyze what is so wrong with our society that causes children to feel like that. And two, we need to look at uh, things like that, that are known to cause trauma. And then you look at things like bullying, um, domestic violence, child sexual abuse, those sorts of things. Um, but that, that's going slightly off track, having said that. But coming back to behavioral issues and uh, mental, emotional uh, disorders, a lot of that I feel that, that cannabis can be a healing herb there. Um, and, and yeah, and then going a step further with naturopathy, naturopathic thinking is that, you know, babies and children are now excreting incredible, incredibly large amounts of plastic. Yes. Which means that there's also taking it in. So when you look at children's toys, clothing, bedding, all of that, um, you know, plastics play a huge role in that, you know, chew on the toys and whatever, uh, and, and clothing, uh, possibly absorption through the skin, certainly absorption from plastic uh, containers that food's been stored in, um, all of that. You know, if you have hemp clothing and hemp toys um, for, for kids, that would already make a huge difference, I think, in the amount of plastics that those children would be exposed to. I agree with you. I agree with you. Yeah. You're an inspiration, Sophia. Quite honestly, I must confess that uh, while I'm talking to you and listening to you, uh, in, uh, something awakened me to help the party to help her grow or something, you know, participate more. And I think we can do I, uh, here in Perth. I think we can do, yeah. yes. Well, <laughs> yeah, meet us, talk, talking about it. You know, just talk about it. Every opportunity you get, talk about it, normalize it, make it, take away the taboo yes. out of cannabis and hemp. and talk about how amazing hemp is and um, how certainly in WA we need to get away from old growth forest logging. We need to get away from the mining industry. We, get need, we need to provide industries that don't require FIFO workers because yes. that seems to be detrimental to mental health of men and, and women too. Um, we need sustainable industries that... Um, uh, economically empowering for the for the area uh, and that are beneficial and that will provide an export industry here um, that will provide yeah economic security and sustainable forever that, that's right and you can do that with him because it grows fast and cannabis it grows fast you don't need a lot of land it doesn't need as much water as a lot of the other crops need here we don't need to clear any more land from it because we've already got lots of um, exactly. land cleared for other things. I mean, the advantages are amazing. Amazing. And we can build cities, touristic places. We can be like a Dubai of the. Exactly. That's right. Yeah. You know, and, and maybe having coffee shops like there is in Amsterdam. Um, and you know, it will allow for a tourist industry as well there. And open a career for maybe cannabis doctors and we can create hospitals and a pharmaceutical industry that will support this. Uh, and we can go crazy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. Yes, yeah. yes. When we are at the beginning of this journey right now where, where it's... Um, at the cusp, I feel, of where uh, in WA, where we can, um, you know, if we get the opportunity to really support all of these things, it, it'll just explode. It'll be amazing. Well, it'll be really amazing. Well, Sophia, we have all the conditions. Um, exactly like you said, there is a lot of capital. In, yeah. We are in the richest, one of the richest cities on earth. Yeah. It, we, we, 
this, the, the stars are aligning. <laughs> exactly, exactly. The time is right. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Destiny brought you to the right time, to the right place to lead, even if you don't want to. You are barking yeah. in the cave of the wolf. Um, people such as Kimi, that is anger to ask you, <laughs> how do you, how can you, uh, what kind of advice you can tell, like so many girls like Kimi that are ready to follow you? Right. Oh, gosh. Just do it. Just do it. Go out there. Um, you know, it's, it, every time you try something new, it is a little bit scary. Right? But every time you try something new and you overcome that scary bit, it becomes easier to overcome the scary bit the next time around. You get... You get used to stepping out beyond your comfort zone. You get used to pushing your own boundaries. Um, and, you know, the more women we have in politics or in any position that has a public profile, the more normal it becomes for us to be out there as well. And the more people will listen too because our voice will become normalised. You know, we... we, we it'll be much less likely that we're going to be dismissed. Having said that, there's still sexism that we're dealing with, but it's okay. You know? I'm and going to ask just, you my yeah, last question from my side, Pia, and that might be uh, uh, um, the first time I ask this question to any of but um, like the times are changing. Also, I'm feeling the responsibility to talk about the last prisoner in with cannabis in our country i believe you know if a person has no criminal record or whatsoever or violent uh, gun something and you're caught with a joint your life cannot go to a drain because of that that law have to be changed and and i don't know how exactly okay. what we're doing yeah. to, to change it <laughs> yeah um I can't think of the right word right now, but I feel that all of those, uh, you know, sort of minor cannabis charges, they, it, they just need to be wiped off the record. There's no need for people to have a criminal record relating to the personal use of, of cannabis. Um, you know, it's, it's different if you've got a growing facility that's illegal with several people with an AK-47 guarding that um, because that is a large criminal undertaking. Having said that, as soon as, as cannabis is legalized, right, there's no need for any of those large illegal facilities that are guarded by armed men. It all becomes superfluous and we can all just move on. Um, yeah. It is like uh, this uh, drug and test, alcohol, uh, drug and alcohol test, the one that is specifically related to cannabis. It is something that is not working. I don't even understand what is that doing in the budget because the technology is proven that it's wrong. It brings to false, uh, false um, uh, results. And, and yeah. we as taxpayers are still paying for something that doesn't work. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. It doesn't. It really doesn't. Some of the research that came out of Victoria was that by simply legalizing cannabis and not putting the resources in regards to policing and courts and jail, um, they could build a new like $350 million hospital every four years or something like that. You know, it was the amount of money and resources that's wasted on policing cannabis for while it's harmless and causes less issues than alcohol and uh, tobacco, it's, I don't know, it's stupid. It's just stupid. I've no other word for it. It lacks analysis. It's backward. Um, at wasteful. I don't, and I, I really don't like waste. Well, um, uh, I can only talk as an engineer because that's my background. But I can prove 
mathematically speaking, mathematically speaking, that those politicians yeah. that support prohibition is because they are getting a benefit out of this. There is not any other way to answer the contradiction of having the knowledge and the waste of money. Yeah, yeah, well, uh, it's, that seems dangerous territory for me to go into. However, um, <laughs> you know, I, I do know that funding for the police, um, you know, that part of that funding is calculated around cannabis prohibition uh, yeah. and that possibly some of the KPIs uh, out there are also related to amount of arrests made, amount of people caught with cannabis. Uh, so there, there may be factors there that um, provide a benefit for, uh, you know, for individual departments. But yeah, but it's in the end, it's wasteful. It's so short-sighted. And it's really not well, going I think, to do I think, I think anything went, for us. I think, Sophia, you went yeah. really, really deep enough. <laughs> 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 Jimmy, yeah. do you have any questions that you would like to address to our honorable Sophia Nermon, representative of ah. the Western Australian Parliament? Okay. Uh, well, um, I just want to say, uh, because yeah. uh, as we all know, the prohibition was uh, 100% brought to humanity by men. And if you notice that in the United States, the, uh, the medical cannabis movement, it was led by women. Mostly mothers were advocating cannabis for their sick children. So I think the role of women uh, is very important at this time because as we see, um, cannabis uh, is a female plant. It's nurturing and uh, it, it's kind of like, it's an epitome of a, a mother, female. So I think uh, women's role in uh, in addressing or reversing cannabis prohibition is very important. Uh, so that's one. And another thing that I'd like to uh, that I'd like to add is that um, people are persecuted over their choice of using um, a safer alternative to, can uh, to alcohol and tobacco. And I think this is where we draw the line, and this is where people get arrested if they're not using it medicinally uh, in a place where it's only allowed for medical use. Then the person is automatically uh, branded as a criminal because of their uh, because of their cannabis use. But um, and uh, coming from a natural uh, um, natural what do you call that uh, natural well being um, background, I think um, I, I truly believe that there is no such thing as recreational use because um, no matter how we use it, we get we get uh, medicinal benefit from it. Either it helps us relax, it helps. Um, our mood, our appetite. So yeah. um, I think what, what Honorable uh, Sophia Mormon said earlier is to uh, normalize and humanize use. And I think with that, uh, the more we, we tell people that it's no different than consuming, uh, actually it's different because you're calmer and uh, you don't get um, aggressive and all. So uh, basically my point is that um, it's really that debate between medical and recreational that puts a stop to all conversation because um, as what's happening in the Philippines, we do get stuck in that conversation, but little did they know that there's yeah. more on cannabis. So we have hemp and the, the least we talk about recreational use, the more time we have to talk about other things, the benefit of the plant. And mm -hmm. yeah, so it's um, really, I think the, uh, the responsibility is up to uh, us, the advocates and um, Congratulations! Congratulations again, ma'am, for infiltrating the government. As what someone said, <laughs> you are at the you are at the uh, are at the, uh, the enemy's territory, and I, I truly believe and I look up to you uh, because yeah, um, you said that you had uh, it was like um, it's not like you had a dream back then that you'll be representing cannabis. It's just that one thing led to another, and then you found yourself there having a seat in the yeah. parliament. That's Sophia, really in military terms, you were you are parachuter. You cross the enemy lines. You jump and you just came in. <laughs> <and> cried, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very yeah. much, Sophia. I got no words of gratitude of your time, your light, your. Thank video. you. Thank you very much. Uh, I am very honored. <laughs>
Thank, thank you, you for you having me. me. And I love, I love both of your enthusiasm. So with all of that, we can only change the world for the better, basically. Yeah. We'll do that. We'll do that together. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So much. Thank you. Thank you. What we are doing, so you keep um, posted, and you'll never know when you. We are at your service. Anything that you need us for, we have a news online newspaper and anything, anything that you need. Ah, uh, what a lovely offer! Thank you. Thank you very much. Very much appreciated. I will hold you to that. Absolutely. Thank Namaste. Thank you. Namaste. Have a wonderful Wednesday. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.